In this video, we're throwing math in my crypto model. You may ask, why throw it in a model? Well, this bull cycle is different. It's no longer good enough to have good marketing and a uh, nice looking roadmap. You actually have to be able to execute. We've now had a couple of years since the last bull cycle, the projects are executing. The ones that execute able to uh, generate some revenue and actual use and have actually, you know, have actual users using your product are the ones that are going to succeed. So let's, uh, let's take a look here, see how it does in the model and uh, got it pulled up here. Now, initially I thought this, this project was uh, a little, a little lackluster, just an, another, um, you know, another wallet, but I think it does have some, some promise and, um, what you have to do is to, to kind of understand that is just look at, look at what they've done. I mean, they've been around for about three years. They don't have a lot of information about their, you know, income generation or the fees they, they generate through their, um, through their wallet and, you know, other, other apps that they, uh, other products they've developed. But, um, I'll show you in a minute, I'll show you the, uh, the reason, the evidence I have, the other evidence I have as well. Um, some of that is that they, they have burned about 1% of their tokens. Uh, so it is a deflationary token. Um, they've got multiple products launched, like their wallet has a really nice user interface. It's very, very developer friendly. And it has like 150 chains on it or something. So it's, it's uh, the user interface makes it really easy to swap between chains. I haven't seen another wallet that's uh, quite as easy. So I understand why people are, are adopting it. They also have a D app store in there that helps you quickly and easily pick, um, you know, pick the D app and, and use it kind of like Coinbase does, but uh, um, I don't know if Coinbase is even close to as seamless as, uh, as a math wallet though. Uh, they do have a layer two chain. They also have a multi-gas uh, multi-chain gas tracker so it makes it a lot easier to adjust your your uh your fees based on you know what what uh which chain you're using you know, switch between uh ethereum or solana or whatever whatever else you're you're swapping between that can be kind of challenging i think metamask for example is, is kind of tough you got to go um you got to go deep in the settings to to uh adjust those or, or look them up online um, and then they also have a cloud wallet. I don't fully understand that some sort of a mining in in integration and a couple other, but these are all like full production available for people to use, which is a great, great sign, uh, on their ability to execute and continue to execute. Uh, so I think, um, I think that lends to them being a little, a little undervalued and we'll, we'll get to that, uh, at the end here, they've got some, uh, strong backers, uh, Binance labs. Uh, Alameda Capital. It's not on their website, but I saw, I saw that listed somewhere. Uh, so may or may not may not be true. Alameda Capital, the uh, the old FTX sister company with uh, Sam Bankman Freed. They actually uh, invested in a bunch of successful blockchains. So um, that part seemed uh, seemed like they they made some good decisions there. And then Multicoin Capital, a couple others. Um, so they've got definitely some marketing power. Their uh, Twitter is pretty active. They run some um, some campaigns and some giveaways and stuff like that. They also have a lot of uh, multi language deployments. So like you can I, I don't know all the languages, but uh, a lot of a lot of like Asian and uh, European languages are on there. So that'll that helps a lot with adoption of the wallet uh, internationally. And uh, I don't know if I put that here, but uh, they're. Also working on some some other ones that are pretty cool. Uh, some of the weaknesses, so they do have uh, substantial whale holdings. I think it's in the like 30% plus. I think it's like 33, 35%. Uh, so you could get sold off on. Uh, not quite sure who who owns those or you know what those wallets, uh, who, who those uh, wallet owners are um, for their chain. Uh, a lot of the solutions aren't novel, but they do such a good, great job interfacing them into the uh, into the wallet that I think they uh, you can make a case that uh, even though they're not novel, 
it reduces friction enough that people will choose um, uh, to use uh, math wallet over over some others. Uh, it, you know the competition, and then I I didn't really find too much on the team. They seem to uh, you know not get themselves out there too much, but they execute. So it's uh, only a bit of a minor concern. But let's look at why I think you know, kind of the evidence for adoption here. And you can see it actually in their chart. So check this out. Like if you zoom out, so they did really well in the last bull cycle. Uh, I mean, they got up to 400 million. So, so good for compared to where they are uh, now. And I uh, theorized that they did a bunch of development in here, but look, look at this like bumpiness here throughout the whole bull cycle. The, the market cap wasn't high. The bumpiness tells me that like developers uh, were using it, right? Like people were using it. And then also you can see like, if you look at other charts, they kind of start to uh, spike in like 2024, other altcoins and uh, low caps, meaning people, you know, people started to really discover some of these projects and have extra liquidity to throw in these projects uh, beginning of 2024, but um, there were uh, there were people who kind of knew that uh, math was going to be a good project, uh, or at least it had a lot of promise, and they they made bets late in 2023. So uh, that tells me it's got good adoption, and there were people that were early 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 in on it, um, which just tells me that people were using it, they liked it, and believed in it enough to to buy their by their projects token. So I think that's what that is. Um, at least it could be, it's a good sign at the least. I like to see that. Uh, and then one other thing I really like about them on their roadmap here, oh yeah, a bunch of languages, Korean, Russian, Chinese, Vietnamese, bunch of languages, which helps with adoption. And then where is it? I think it's, uh, there it is. So two applications in the future that could be, you know, really set this this wall apart is uh, crypto crypto wallet like Easy Pay. So something that um, I, oh, where is it? it's not it's not it. But basically, it looks like they're trying to interface, you know, paying with your. Uh, you know, have you had the wallet on the phone? So they have the wallet and an extension uh, on the browser on the web, and then you can also get it on your phone. But it looks like they're trying to allow you to pay at retailers with basically like through your uh, Apple Pay or something, something like that, or, or your Android. I don't know what it's called on Android, but that would be a huge differentiator if they were able to uh, to develop that. And then Math ID, I kind of like this this idea. Basically, it is. The uh, blockchain digital identity, and there are a lot of a lot of chains trying to solve the problem. But if you think of where where uh, the makes the most sense for a digital ID to live, that would be in your wallet, right? In your crypto wallet. Um, so I think uh, you know if they could if they could implement that, I think it'd be a very good uh, catalyst for them. Uh, and I also saw somewhere they're uh, either in development or early stages of uh, deploying online identity right and so it's kind of like how you have uh you know you can log into a website with your facebook account or your google account you know you could actually instead log in with your uh with your math wallet extension um, in your browser right so i think um you know fewer passwords to to memorize for people and a little more seamless integration very very se secure i believe that the encryption would be should be um, superior to that of a, a Gmail password. So uh, I think all those those three um, you know, three technologies, they could execute on those. I think they'd be huge catalysts in, in the long run. So I actually think the staying power of this um, uh, of this blockchain could be quite higher and uh, than I originally thought. And that's just because I think they can they can if you know if they hit one of these, I think it would be a huge, huge catalyst for these guys and uh you get a lot of a lot of people uh uh using a lot more daily active users and then just want to look at their d app store real quick they've got like 200s 
200 of these things. And like a lot of, you know, a lot of, there are a lot of DFs out there, very easy to, in the Coinbase wallet, for example, I know you used to be able to at least, I haven't used it in a while, but you used to be able to just go to the website domain. But these are all listed and they do like a formal onboarding. Uh, so it makes it very seamless in the wallet. You can just go to the kind of browser, search for what you need and then pull it up. So anyway, that's the, uh, that's the map project. And uh, let's go back and do the real quick. Let's do the price targets. So I think uh, I think Math, Math Wallet could, um, you know, potentially hit a few billion. I comped a couple other ones. Uh, the wallets in the last cycle didn't do super well. Uh, top market caps of of one inch, uh, I think, was one of the best comparisons. You know, I think they've kind of outgrown the wallet space. Uh, but um, I think I think this is more, you know, math is more of a pure wallet play, uh, kind of more like a trust wallet. Uh, from what I can tell, I think I think uh, math wallets execution is better than trust wallets. Uh, I haven't done too deep of a dive into them. And then uh, Coin98 is another one. They're like a wallet and a DeFi uh, type uh, type play. You know, math does have uh, have a Dex inside of it. They do have um, you know the ability to swap swap uh, coins. I believe chains too. So I think it's also a bit of a bridge, which definitely increases the usability of it. Uh, I know developers have uh, historically done it. So yeah. right now we're sitting at uh, last I had it was at eighty four thousand. We're at one hundred nine thousand. So I did that a couple of days ago. So I'm still a little off on my market cap. So we'll just throw that right in there. And uh, I think we could see a low price target of about $14. That'd be a $2.5 billion uh, cap on it. High of around seven. I think, uh, you know, if it's able to reach a, a one inch um, type of type of valuation. But like I said, one inch does a little bit more. So um, I don't know. You, you know, you really have to get uh, get some additional adoption. You know, more of a mainstream adoption of of math wallet. And that's that's uh, it kind of plays towards the uh, it's popular in the dev space, but I don't see anything really holding it back from taking uh, taking up some some higher adoption. They could uh, swap you know a lot of MetaMask uh, and and others other wallet type users just with their their UI and, and usability, or you know if they're able to deploy on one of these. Payment technologies or digital ID technology. I think payment would go go a long way. I mean, that, that's a that's a great story for retail and the casual user, right? Get this wallet, put it on your phone. You can just go to uh, you know, seven eleven, seven eleven, buy your zins with it or whatnot, <laughs> or your groceries. That's a that's a uh, that's a really marketable story, right? So um, we'll just see how the development goes with them, but I think it's it's got a lot of potential. Um, because of that technology, they've got huge, huge speculative potential. You know, they're able to, to keep executing on some of these things. So um, reputation took a bit of a hit just because I don't know much about their team. But I will say uh, the model doesn't take in as much um, execution uh, for for the reputation score. It's it's more it's more about like what we know about the about the team and what information we're able to find. So. The execution would actually, if I would make me want to kind of makes me want to go in and, you know, increase their reputation score a little bit. Um, and then their staying power. I think that's a, I also think that might be a little, a little low um, if they are de able to develop some of these uh, technologies that retail might like. Um, you know, if they're not, if they don't get those out during this bull, uh, they don't get at least one of those out during this bull cycle. I think they could do really well, but I don't know if I see their uh, their price holding holding as well into uh, into the bull uh, next bull cycle. So that's what I got on math. If you got any details that I missed or any more information, throw them in the comments and uh, tell me what you think about math too. We'd love to hear your thoughts. Thanks for watching. Have a good one.